We've been taught the wrong way to stop slicing. I mean, think about it. How many times have you come across a tip, you've tried it out to try to improve your slice and it simply hasn't worked? Now you're a great athlete. I guarantee you that if you were taught the right way, you'd be able to fix your slice just like that. So what is it about the traditional way of trying to stop the slice that doesn't work? We're gonna get into that. And then we're also gonna talk about my very simple four-step process. When you follow this, it's the quickest, easiest way to improve your slice. It really works like magic. So why does the traditional method of not slicing not work? Well, what's happening when you slice is you're coming a little bit over the top or your swing path is coming out and your club is moving right to left across the ball. Now I'm exaggerating there, you may not be doing it this much, but that club is moving from right to left across this golf ball. Now when you do this, you're keenly aware that you have to have your face open. If this face isn't open, that ball's gonna go a mile to the left. So if I'm coming over the top and I release the face, that ball's going straight out of bounds left, right? So I'm not gonna do that. Again, you're a good athlete, your body senses this. So you hold that face open as you swing to the left. That allows the ball to start kinda down the left side of the fairway and then fade into the fairway. And when you do it well, it's right in the middle of the fairway. You lose a little bit of yardage doing that, but you can still hit some good shots. Every once in a while, it goes a little bit haywire, you lose even more yardage, you don't hit it very solid, you end up to the right or to the left. It can really cause a lot of problems in your golf swing. Now the traditional way of saying stop the slice is by saying let's swing more inside out or to the right. Get that inside out path, get this club in the slot here as we're making the downswing. The problem with that is as a slicer, you're aware that the face always needs to be open. Remember if I swing to the left and I release the face, that ball's going out of bounds. So by being used to having that face open, now when you swing inside out, that ball not only starts to the right in the right rough, but then it still slices. We haven't gotten rid of the slice and it's a terrible shot to the right. Well, again, being the athlete you are, you realize that's not what you wanna do, so you start going back to that over the top again to get the ball back out in the fairway. So it's kind of a never ending cycle between trying to swing inside out, it not working, and then going back to what you're comfortable with. We're gonna break that process today. Now, one thing that nobody else in any of their programs have, and you've probably seen a ton of slicing programs. I've seen a lot lately charging $97 to teach you how to fix your slice. Well, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna charge you anything. You're gonna get all for free here today, but they're still missing something in those programs. It's the way that your body naturally learns. It's called interleaving practice, and it's one of the most studied topics in motor learning. I'm gonna talk about that in my four-step process, and I'll tell you what, if you follow along with these drills, it doesn't take hardly any time at all, and you're never gonna slice again. Let's go ahead and get started. Now be sure to hit that subscribe button. I have got a ton of great videos coming out for you this year, and I don't want you to miss any of them. You're only gonna be notified when those are released if you're a subscriber. Also click that thumbs up, that really helps me out, and comment below, I'd love to hear from you. All right, so we're about to jump into this four-step process, but before we do, we really have to understand why we're doing these four steps. If we don't understand the why, what's gonna happen is we'll try these out, we'll forget about it a couple days later, we'll be right back slicing again. I want you to eliminate the slice forever and understanding the why is a big piece of that. So piece number one is gonna be controlling this club face. You remember that I said when you're coming over the top, traditionally you have to have that club face open to be able to get that ball to start toward the fairway and not go way left if you're coming over the top like that. So you're very used to having the face open. What we're gonna do is we're gonna employ a technique called interleaving. It's also called random practice or variable practice. It's been highly studied in motor learning. And what you're trying to do here is you're trying to feel the extremes. So we already are used to having the extreme of having the face open. Now I need to have the extreme of really closing that face and having it super closed. I got a couple easy tips that are gonna get you to close that face really to the extreme. Now, when that's happening, balls are gonna go directly left and that's a good thing. We have to get those balls going way left so that now when we do step two, which is gonna be swinging more inside out, now it's gonna make sense of why we'd wanna swing inside out. So when you swing inside out now, you're gonna be releasing that face. It's gonna to start to the right side of the fairway and then draw back in to the middle of the fairway. You're gonna have more speed and power because you're gonna have less loft coming into the club. It's gonna really, the ball's gonna pop off the face. It's gonna be way better. So again, we're gonna employ interleaving practice there we already know how to swing to the left, but we're gonna go really extreme and swing way to the left so we can feel that extreme. We're gonna go really extreme, swing way to the right so that we can feel that. That's the fastest way to learn. Using those interleaving techniques will take days and weeks off your practice versus hours. You can really change it like that if you use this. The third step is gonna be getting to the ball. We're gonna talk about why there's a problem 
when I use my inside out technique, my inside out swing, now all of a sudden it's difficult for me to get to the ball for what I'm used to. And there's a specific way you move your body, some specific drills to be able to reach the ball so you feel comfortable hitting it with some power. And then finally, the fourth step is we're gonna take that hook that we've developed, really starting that ball down the right rough and drawing it back big time right to left curve. And we're gonna to tone that down to a draw. You follow these four steps and the whys that you'll never struggle with that slice again. All right, so now we're ready for the fun part. Let's jump right in here. Let's learn the first piece, which is controlling that face. Now, if I can get the face to open as much as I want and close as much as I want and really get those extremes, now I have control over this club face. I can get it to do whatever I want it to do. That's the goal of this. That's why we're going to these extremes so we can feel both ways. Now, you're already comfortable having the face open. So I want you to feel that even more extreme. Now, I'm not gonna hit this one very hard because it's gonna go right into the pond here, but I want you to make a little mini swing you can use a driver. You can even do this with a six or seven iron if you want to. We don't have to do this with a driver. If you feel a little bit more comfortable, you can start with that, then move to the driver, which is a little longer, not as easy to hit. But I'm gonna feel like the face is wide open. So as you swing, I wanna feel like the face is pointing directly to the right, and I'm just gonna get a little 30 or 40 yard shot, and you can see that ball shot off to the right. I still hit it in the water, lost the golf ball, but that's all right. So the second piece here, and we're gonna alternate the, these, we're gonna do 10 swings, uh, excuse me, 10 swings each, so 20 total swings. And the second one, I'm gonna really get this ball to go dead to the left, which means my club face is gonna be very closed as I'm coming into this shot. This is not gonna be a good golf shot. It's not even supposed to be really a golf shot. It's just a face awareness drill. And once you get awareness of this face, now I can do whatever I want to with it. Here's the steps to make this work. Number one, you're gonna feel like in the backswing, you really rotate these hands clockwise. So if I had a door handle, I'm going to rotate the handle to the left and now logo my glove is facing down. If I had it with my right hand, I'm going to turn it to the left. The palm of my hand is facing down. So this would be kind of a normal backswing. I'm going to rot every rotate everything down. Now the face is really closed. If I do that with a golf club, you'll see that as I go back, this will be a normal swing. I'm rotating it until everything is very closed here. So if I went back down to my impact, that would be face pointing way over to the left there. That's exactly what we want. So you're gonna feel like the logo of your glove is pointing out. Again, your hands are turning that doorknob to the left and everything is very closed here. As you come down and swing, I want you to visualize the sweet spot of your golf club being all the way on the outside of the golf ball. So if I swung, it would just go, almost graze my left leg is the feeling that I'm gonna have. So very closed, close, close, close all the way through get to the outside of the golf ball so it goes straight left. So let me show you what that would look like on just a little mini swing here. So just to dead to the left, again, 30, 40 yards is all we're doing. If you're seeing this ball barely go to the left, so if I make a swing and the golf ball looks like this, so just a little bit to the left, then I'm not doing nearly enough. Again, I wanna feel like this thing is just shooting past my left leg. You're gonna alternate 20 swings, one to the right, one to the left, one to the right, one to the left. Now, the alternation is what's really key here because that's what's gonna allow your brain to feel the differences between face open and face closed. If I just try to do the closed one and the closed one only, it's not gonna work. Now, if those drills don't work and you need to get even more extreme, I got a couple more tips for you. That was the back swing, and that's the easiest way to do it. You kind of set it closed in the back swing and keep it closed coming on through. If you're still struggling, we're gonna close it in the back swing, just like we talked about. Hands turning to left, this club face closing. And then we're gonna close it even more in the downswing. So as you come through, imagine the hands rolling on over. So if you had uh, something between your forearms, I want my forearms to roll over each other. And now you'll see the face of this club is pointing directly down to the ground. If I'm going toward the camera here, that would look like this. Close, 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 everything's closed in the back swing. And then in the downswing, it's gonna look like that, faces down, this is logo down, forearms rolled over each other. So clothes going back, even more clothes coming through to really hook it. Now if you do that, that ball is going dead left here. Let me show you one real quick. So again, I'm trying to go more and more extreme. Whatever my feeling has to be is completely fine to make this happen. So I'm very closed and then I'm rolling it on over. Almost like you're taking the logo of your glove and twisting it this way. High handicap golfers tend to take the glove and turn it this way to move the club through contact. 
that's a back and forth like that. Low handicap golfers tend to bow that wrist and turn it this way. So the palm of my hand is up and I'm releasing it. When I add the right hand in there, that's releasing it that way. So again, I'm very, very extreme, very exaggerated with this. As you can see, it's just going dead to left. It's very key that you do that. Do those 20 swings and we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so once we've done those reps, and to be honest with you, you don't have to do 20. 10 would be completely fine as long as they're successful. So if you're making them go left and you're making them go right, that's really all we're after. Once you've learned that and done it a few times, it's pretty easy to do. So you don't have to just go out there all day and hit a whole bucket like that. A few shots just to get awareness of the face, now you're ready to move on. Now the second piece, we have to get an awareness of the path now. So we know how to close and open the face from the drill we just did turning the hand close on the back swing, rotating on through close in the forward swing. Now we have to understand how to get that pathway to the right and then also what causes a pathway to the left. So imagine I'm swinging at this tee here and I'm gonna actually make my path go way to the left. Imagine that if I was gonna keep my feet basically lined up like toward the target here, but I wanted to swing directly 90 degrees to the left. Well, what I'd have to do is my upper body would have to shift too far forward now all of a sudden my shoulders would have to open up this way. My foot would obviously have to come off the ground there. But then I would be able to swing directly to the left. So what I want you to do here, seems a little silly, but go ahead and put a tee down as though you were gonna hit that ball 90 degrees that way. So I'm gonna set up to where a normal golf shot would be. I'm gonna rotate my body to the left. And now all of a sudden I'm gonna swing that direction. So you'll notice what happens here. Look at my hips very open. Look at my shoulders up over my front foot. They're pointing to the left and that allows me to swing in that direction. You're doing that a little bit when you come over the top. Over the top players tend to get out in front of it. The body starts going this way. My shoulders start getting more over this lead leg and that promotes a right to left over the top type path. Let's go the opposite direction now. I want you to turn 90 degrees this way. Like I'm gonna hit toward the camera and I'm gonna go ahead and put a T down there also just outside my right foot. So again, here's my normal ball. Feet are set up like I'm going down the fairway. And now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. And I'll move because I put the tee down in the wrong spot. But I'd have to lift up my left foot. Now my chest is way over my right foot. I'd really be able to swing out to the right and hit that way. My weight would be more on my back foot. If you're over the top, your weight's on your left foot. If I'm coming from the inside, my weight stays on this back foot a little longer and then shifts forward. So you're naturally gonna do all these things. I could sit here and go over every single little tiny detail about what your feet, your hips, your shoulders, everything would be doing different, but I don't need to do all that. All I need to do is put a, a tee over here, an imaginary ball over here, and get you to make some swings where you're gonna swing directly out to the right. That's all you gotta do, it's that simple. So again, 20 swings. We're gonna do one way left and then immediately go one way to the right. You don't have to hit a golf ball when doing this, and you don't even really need the tees. You can do this right from your living room. Just try to get the swing path 90 degrees that way, 90 degrees that way. Then we're ready to move on to step number three, because now we're gonna have complete control of the extremes of the path. All right, so finally, there's an obvious problem with what I've taught you so far. When I'm making my swing path to the right, that's fine, and we all could swing to the right, but now all of a sudden our ball would have to be way back here in the stance. If you're gonna swing with a really inside out path, I'd have to have the ball way back here so that I can make that kind of swing direction. If my ball's up here, where it should be, kind of on my left foot with a driver, now my body's kind of in the way, I can't really get to that golf ball. And the reason for that is this, whenever you're taking your normal swing and we're a little over the top, remember now, my hips are often behind my upper body and my shoulders. When we did that swing where I was way to the left, that's exactly what's going on. When you're having your over the top swing, that's what's happening. It's a little bit the upper body is in front of the lower body and that's promoting that over the top swing. So this is blocking you. My hips are blocking me from swinging more to the inside. So I try to swing to the inside, but I have this bad body alignment and now my hips are jammed up and they're in the way. By making the swing 90 degrees to the right, we fix that. There's no way you can swing this direction with your hips in the way. I've had to clear my hips back this way. My shoulders got to the right of my hips and now I could swing out in that direction. That's something you naturally do when you just try to swing that direction. But not really gonna transfer over to hitting a good golf shot because I'd have to have my ball way back here to get that big inside out path. And if I wanted a little bit less of an inside out path, I'd have to have it there. And by the time I get back up here again, it feels awkward. 
So here's what we're gonna do. We have to learn to get the body out of the way to promote that inside path. I have to make a lot of room here so that I can hit this ball from the inside and have plenty of room for my club to travel that way. There's a very simple drill I have for this. So number one, I'm gonna go ahead and set up, this will be my imaginary golf ball that I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna put one tee six inches behind that and another one six inches behind that. So I'm gonna set up as though this is the golf ball I'm gonna hit, this front tee. Then I'm gonna gradually work on swinging to the right and hitting each of those tees as I'm doing that. So again, I'm gonna get the same feeling I had when I was swinging in this direction, really out to the right. I'm gonna to try to clip this tee. Now in order to do that, I have to get my hips out of the way. So I really want you to feel like this leg is angled in and now you've created all this space here to allow your arms to swing to the right. And you'll see I can still get this really extreme for now. Let's go really extreme and get that ball swinging away or that club swinging way out there to the right and I'm gonna hit that back tee. Now I move one tee forward, then I'm gonna have to go even more. My hips are gonna have to go even more out of the way. My shoulders are angled back. And now I've created all this room to where I can still swing say 45 degrees to the right and hit that second tee. There we go. So now my body's getting out of the way for the first time. We're getting rid of this motion and getting in the opposite of that, which is, again, I'm going extreme here. I'm taking advantage of this interleaving to make things faster. And then finally, I'm gonna go to this front tee and do the exact same thing. Again, I have to make huge amounts of space, let my body clear out of the way to be able to hit that tee. I'm gonna swing again 45 to the right, and you can see now how I could really make an inside out swing that my hips are out of the way. So let's put this together now. We have the club face closing. We now have a new feeling of how to swing inside out. Let's just do both of them at the same time. So let's grab a golf ball here, and I want you to make a huge hook I want you to feel like you're swinging 45 degrees to the right, way toward this house. I don't even know if you can see that in the frame, but almost out of the frame to the right. And then I wanna have that club face closing down so that ball really hooks back. So if I do this correctly, I'm gonna start this ball way over that pond and I'm gonna try to hook it back all the way to the left side of the fairway. Now I may not get that extreme, but that's the feeling that I'm trying to get. So I'm closing in the back swing, creating this room in here to swing to the right and I'm really letting that thing swing. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Oh, awesome. So that ball was a huge hook. Started kind of down the right side of the fairway and it hooked all the way over to the left side of the fairway. So you'll see from my flight scope numbers there, the path or the direction I was swinging is way to the right and my face is closing down to the left of that. That's how you get that big hook. Now I want you to go ahead and repeat that five more times. So again, if I'm not swinging far enough to the right, my goal is to get those shoulders lined up more behind my body, clear the hips out of the way, and then I can really have that path to the right. I wanna feel like, and this isn't actually happening, but I wanna feel like my club almost grazes my leg as I'm swinging through here, coming so far inside out. Let me go ahead and try this one again. I'm gonna to try to start it even more to the right and hook it even more on this one if I can. Let's give it a whirl. There we go. So I started that one kind of in the right edge of the fairway and it probably hooked a good, I don't know, maybe 50 yards, something like that. And if we look at the flight scope again, we're gonna see the same thing. Pathway to the right and the face really closed. That's what creates the big hook. Don't be afraid of that. I wanna see big hooks from you at first. I want the more the better. If you can hook it 60 yards, hook it 60. That'd be fantastic at this point because the next step, we're gonna straighten this out into a draw. All right, so here's the cool thing. Now that we've got these extremes and we're really trying to swing out there, I bet you can make what feels like a normal swing. And because you've made these such extreme exaggerations, your normal swing is gonna be pretty straight now. So I bet if you go ahead and you just take a normal swing, whatever you feel like, you don't worry about any instruction, you're probably gonna be geared a little bit more toward a draw. So let's go ahead and give that a whirl. Yeah, and you can see there, I just hit a nice draw right down the middle of the fairway. Couldn't hit one much better than that. Now the cool thing about this is that you now have control of it. We haven't thrown a Band-Aid on this. We've actually learned how to control the face. We've done some drills where it's really closed. We've done some drills where it's really open. You start to getting a feel. You're starting to develop a feel of what your hands and arms feel like to create an open and closed face. We also learned what it means to swing more from the inside out, how we have to create this pocket back here by angling our body so now we have room to swing inside out. And if we want to go the other way, we even know what we have to do to come over the top. We create this pocket in the other direction. Shoulders get ahead, hips get back, and now I can swing to the left. 
so you have control over how to make a path to the right and the left. Now, when you have control of those two things, you can do whatever you want to do. If the ball starts to hook a little bit too much, you go a little bit more toward your fade swing and straighten it out. If the ball starts to slice a little bit too much, you go a little bit more toward your hook swing and start to straighten it out. So now you have the real tools to be able to solve any problem that you want to. All right, so now we're into the really fun stuff. We're starting to control this nice draw here. Let's add some power to it. Now you can finally unleash your inner athlete and swing with a lot of authority because you're not afraid that that ball is gonna slice. Now you can hit that nice power draw and the harder you swing, the farther it's gonna go. A big piece of this is what I call the power turn. And it's really understanding how to load your hips and your shoulders up in the backswing. Now the cool thing is, is even if you're tight, I have a very special way that you can still get that good turn if you're not flexible at all. I'm gonna play one of my best power turn videos here in just one second. Go ahead and click the card that pops up on the screen or the link down below. You'll be able to get instant access to that video. You'll start turning more and not only are you gonna draw it, you're gonna draw it and hit it really far. But with the correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing that you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's gonna allow us to have a lot of power. So we don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power, and we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos, and I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now here, we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're gonna see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.